Christ, Buddha, Shiva, Moses. I'm trying to think down the generations, the centuries. I'm not really an intellect when it comes to the mind and history, but <clears throat> all these saints appeared at different, let's call them saints. But it's the Holy Spirit appearing through specific bodies. This Holy Spirit is total pure consciousness. Um, they appear at different stages. For why? You see, for what purpose? Well, every now and then they get this Holy Spirit consciousness has to revive itself, you see. It has to reignite the light that it wants to be seen as. It wants to be, it wants to expose you as, you know, your truth, not as a struggling human being. It wants to make sure that you are getting the best out of your life in this body. So it appears every now and then, not to teach you a lesson, but the lesson is <coughs> held within the appearance of all these saints. That consciousness is appearing through the vessels of these saints, you see. We try and signal, singularize them and identify them as specific names and persons. But they always said, it's not about this body and mind. Please stop worshipping this. Worship what is coming through this body and mind. Consciousness, every now and then, for its own survival mechanism, its own only understanding about projecting total love. When it feels it's diminishing in certain areas, it produces itself through a or a couple of bodies, human bodies. The Words that come through the human bodies are misinterpreted like the Bible was, like the Bhagavad Gita was, like the Quran is, not a, a devalued books, truly worthy books, because you can see whoever was trying to explain what this Holy Spirit is, it's not explainable, it's not describable with human words like I have tried so often. But it, what language it speaks is not this language, you see. It's not any emotional and sensory language. So it appears every now and then, every century. It's always here. But it's looking for vessels that it can trust, that it is quite strong, that can react and accept it as it is. Vessels who are prepared to surrender and die. But no one has ever died, you see. So. So. <clears throat> consciousness reignites itself. Like. The battery goes flat. You put it into the recharger. Consciousness. Relit its own light. Through. Beings. But it's always lit, you see. It's just that the beings are telling you. The saints are telling you, come on, come on. But they're telling you in the wrong way, you see. They're trying to get every single being to be beautiful, enshrouding, peace, harmony, light. And it's not going to happen, you see. Consciousness is a live org organism. It also has all the states that you have of anger and pain and passion and needs and desires and happiness and joy and bliss. It's all these states within consciousness. So to have a whole of humanity beautifully, peacefully as one, it's not going to happen. Saints are born now, but like 
our education system says we don't recognize life sense. You see, we don't recognize life sense. It's only when a person comes and hundreds of years later on, the books are found, the writings are found. They go into the communities that have been hidden for over a hundred years and say, what's this community about? Well, it was about Muji. It was about Papaji. Who are they? And then the videos are now boomed. And, ah, oh, I wish they were alive. Consciousness is always on the prowl for bodies who are willing to give and surrender. Consciousness chose this body. This body does not want to be recognized as anything but a body. Because the body is useless and it has been it's so evident in the past that you are constantly worshipping Christ's body, Buddha's body, Krishna's body, by making cartoons, making images, fooling people into saying, you know, it's about this particular body. No, it was not about any particular body. It's not about a body or a mind. It is about consciousness and what you are beyond consciousness. You create this consciousness. Collectively, we have created this Holy Spirit. We are beyond it, you see, but not individually. And it's we have created to, to remind us, steady on, too much wars, too much hate, too much ego, too much anger. Steady on. So it comes through. The ones that we go forward, you see, we're like in the front line of the war. And we know that what is coming may be harmful. But so we send your strongest guards, you see. You go. You'll be okay, you see. So we create consciousness, we create the Holy Spirit, and each one of us knows that it's an absolute valid for existence to continue in a universal form, whether it's a dream or an idea, it matters not. To, to continue this, this Holy Spirit has to come through these speakers. And instead of identifying the speakers, identify with the words, you see. That's our problem. We identify with the speakers and not the words. Buddha was a form. Buddhism were the words that evolved from the form. When you take Buddha out and say he never existed, Buddhism remains. The words remain. See? The words will take you everywhere. In a human world, they'll take you to better education. Better words, more intelligent words, more elongated words, more defined words, better job. The words will take you home. The Holy Spirit comes through in words, not in images. Images, it appears as, but humans think that oh, they're beautiful, they're wonderful. They're not looking at the image as an explanation or a description or a way of understanding what this Holy Spirit is. There are not no saints born. There are simple bodies and vessels that have been specifically chosen. Not because they're special. Because they may have some stronger ability. They are more, maybe more wiser. They have maybe been so many times in a body that it's important that these ones are used. See? This body and mind is the same body and mind as every other body and mind. It works, it does, it sleeps, it has children, married, everything the same. But something comes through it. Consciousness expresses itself through it. It matters not. If you recognize this body and the mind, it matters not. It absolutely matters not. 
but it matters that something may click within you to make you understand how vital you are. You are not the body and mind that speaks the words. They're like the telescope, you see. When you give your child a telescope for Christmas, what's more important, the child or the telescope? Or what the child sees? Not the telescope. What is important is the child and what it sees. So please disregard this body and mind. Just another body and mind. But don't disregard some of the words that have been spoken. Most of them may appear as nonsense. That's the ones that you should be suspect about. Mm. I don't like these words. Why don't I like these words? Or, I like these words, but I don't understand them. Why don't I understand these words? And then you look at who's analyzing the words. Alan Watts, Yuji Krishnamurti, David Bomb, Jiddu Krishnamurti, Osho, all vessels of total truth coming through. And their unique body and mind tries to describe it in a unique, different way, all speaking the same language. But they won't be recognized 100 years down. I hope they're never recognized. I hope their words are recognized. Because if you have experienced truth, you will know that it's not about this body and mind being given a sainthood or a crown or whatever. It is about the surrendering of the body and mind to allow whatever comes through to come through with no organized speech structure, plan, motive, aim at getting these people and not these people. Anyone is welcome and everyone is welcome to say, I don't want you. But don't dismiss the words. Even one word out of billions of words may change your whole world. Holy Spirit is always on the prowl. Don't try and find it. If it wants you, it'll find you. You'll become some sort of saint. But you'll not want that recognition if you've really experienced truth. If you've really experienced truth, then you'll know that all is truth and none of this is truth. But the one who experiences truth is not this human mind and body. It's not even self. It is consciousness exploring itself through a form, a world, a universe, and realizing how much in love with itself it is. And we are all experiencing the love that it experiences about itself when truth has been revealed and let loose. So your body will shine like a saint. Your body will glow like a saint. But it's not a saint, you see. It's consciousness saying, I chose that one. That one came willingly. That one gave up. That one surrendered. And this one will shine so that others can see what is optional when they're empty and willing to surrender to the truth, Holy Spirit, consciousness, and this one moment that I am.